good morning to you from my car. I'm on my way to Norwich this morning, which is a, a rather lovely city in East Anglia. It's about 25 miles from where I live. And um, I half expected this morning that I might do this. Uh, you might think that's a funny expression, but uh, we often use it here in the UK. I half expected to do that. And uh, life's full of surprises, isn't it? That's what sort of comes to mind this morning. And um, we never know sometimes what's around the corner for us. We don't know what to expect. And the word expectation really came to my mind this morning. And uh, especially looking at the world of politics. Uh, we've got this leadership contest going on at the moment in the UK with uh, having this trust uh, being ousted in this globalist coup, which is pretty obvious actually. And uh, now we've got the prospect of uh, a Hindu Prime Minister coming in, I think he's a Hindu, comes from a, married into at least a billionaire family, and of course he's part of the globalist elite, and uh, I think he's going to be unchallenged. Uh, there was a talk that Boris Johnson was going to come back in again, but uh, he's pulled out, and uh, one could say that half the country expected that he'd pull out, but then there's another half that expected that he might even come back. And of course it brings to mind the scripture, doesn't it? Because uh, there's so much speculation going on at the moment about Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? And uh, for many years now I've, uh, I've speculated on this myself. I had a vision in 1985, which is, uh, if you go back in my uh, playlist of videos, you will see that uh, there's one called My Vision of the Antichrist, 1985. And uh, I don't say that he is a Middle Eastern, but uh, in my vision, I saw a man who um, was in Egypt and was wearing a general's uniform and did have a, uh, the skin of, let's well, say, the skin tone color of, uh, of, of an Egyptian Middle Eastern, which of course, he must be a man that must appeal to all nations especially to Jews and to Muslims. But uh, be that aside, we don't know what to expect anymore, do we? We're living in a world that is really turning topsy-turvy all the time. All kinds of prophecies are coming out. People are saying all kinds of things. Um, and uh, God, of course, isn't like that. God doesn't work inside our speculations. There are people now saying, uh, there's a brother on, on one of the YouTube channels, uh, Monty Judah. He's uh, really a, uh, he's a messianic brother, a Jewish brother, and he has a, a wonderful news channel, and he puts out some really interesting information. But he's been speculating lately that Prince Charles, or shall I say King Charles, is uh, actually possibly the one we're looking to. Yesterday, uh, Monty was talking about um, May the 6th, which will be the... Uh, coronation day of Prince Charles and he was saying that this will coincide with um, some other event which I can't remember now but uh, he saw this as, uh, as a sign that uh, Prince Charles or King Charles as I keep, I keep calling it <laughs> um, is going to be the one uh, if not the one the one to certainly usher in something new so we, we have expectations about King Charles and then uh, there's a lady also on YouTube who puts forth some very strong prophecies. Um, it's a channel called The Master's Voice, which I must say I have put some videos up on, and a lot of people have castigated me for putting them up there. But uh, I found her to be a woman of God. She seems to speak nothing but scripture. I can't falter along those lines, but she puts out some, uh, what some people consider as some pretty outrageous prophecies. And she talks about Barack Obama. And uh, I've heard speculation about Barack Obama uh, for quite a number of years. I've never put much credence to it. But we're starting to see these people emerge, aren't we? Out of the shadows. And of course, some of them now in plain sight. Um, people saying, yes, the World Economic Forum, keep your eyes out for that. Mr. Schwab or Mr. Harari. But is God, is God such a, 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 a is God is not a being, sorry, uh, God is not somebody that we can put um, our speculations onto and say, yes, isn't God leading us to that particular person or that particular person? 
Uh, I'm inclined to think that when the Antichrist emerges, when he shows himself to be who he really is, we're going to get a big surprise. And it may not be who we expected at all. And that's how God works. He's a God of the impossible, a God of the unexpected. And um, I didn't actually expect myself to be going to Norwich this morning, actually. I'm desperately in need of a pair of ankle boots. Um, those of you that watch me regularly will know that I have a bad ankle and it's still quite swollen up and uh, it's something called tibialis posterior um, something else I can't remember um, it's got quite a long name and I'm apparently at stage two so to avoid myself going into any further stages uh, I need to get a solid ankle boot and have an orthotic made so Norwich which is uh, the closest city to where I live the only place that has any decent shops. So I'm expecting to buy something decent when I get there. That's why I'm not looking at you this morning, I'm on the road. But um, as I say, God is a God of the unexpected. Paul, of course, knew all about that, didn't he, when he was on the road to Damascus. The last thing Paul expected was to be, as it were, arrested by Jesus. He didn't expect that uh, he would be meeting up with the very person that he was uh, causing other people to suffer for, from just following him. And that's God. That's the God that we have. He's a God of miracles. He's a God of healing. And uh, let's expect anything when it comes to trusting and following the Lord, because that's what faith is all about. Abraham didn't expect to be chosen by God. Moses didn't expect to come across the burning bush. And uh, how many things are, are expected in our lives, unexpected in our lives, we just don't know that are going to happen. And sometimes God turns things around completely, doesn't he? He makes things happen that we would never have imagined. As the scripture says, more than we can ask or think, just lets us into who God is, that he has plans for us that we will never imagine. Those of us who try, of course, to imagine what it's going to be like when Jesus returns. What kind of a kingdom is it going to be? What will we expect? Well, certain things we can be sure of. He's going to reign, and he's going to reign with power, with glory, and with love. And um, there's not going to be any dissension, not because Jesus is going to reign like a fascist or a totalitarian dictator, but because everything is going to be so wonderful. And that's the great expectation that we have, isn't it, as Christians? The great hope, the great thing that we trust in. So faith and expectation, to some degree, are, are related, aren't they? And. Uh, those of you that uh, have uh, inherited something probably knew from way back that you expected to get something. And of course, there are those people who get to inherit something completely by surprise. And that's a wonderful thing too, isn't it? And I believe that that's what God is. Our Jesus is a God of surprises. So maybe by the time I've finished making this video, got to Norwich, found the right boots that I want, hopefully, I say expectantly, that I can come back satisfied, come back knowing that um, God has worked, God has done something miraculous. So I'll talk to you again when I get to Norwich, and uh, we'll see what scriptures the Lord has for us. Well, I've arrived in Norwich, and um, I've actually zoomed in on the scene that you see in front of you. Uh, that's Norwich Cathedral. And uh, it's uh, quite a splendid building inside. Um, I don't have the time this morning to take you in, but um, it's very beautiful, as most of these UK cathedrals are. It's actually got the second tallest spire in the UK. Behind me is Norwich Prison, which, again, I can't show you in the screen here. It's a rather ancient old red brick building and uh, I suppose I don't know if you can actually uh, look out from the prison windows onto that wonderful scene 
But of course, um, what we're seeing in front of us is a, a scene of freedom, isn't it? People walking about on the uh, hills in front here and uh, beginning to enjoy the day. Not knowing what to expect, as I was saying as we were driving in this morning. And I just want to share a couple of scriptures with you. Um, James 4, 13 to 14, I suppose, is the most prominent one of the lot in this, uh, on this subject. Come now you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Yes, what are we? Nothing at all in terms of uh, length of days. We don't have a lot of days, do we? Three score and ten, or by reason of strength, eighty. But um, God doesn't want us to make huge plans for ourselves at this present time in the world. I believe that, that God is speaking to us clearly, but he wants us to be girded and ready, expecting him. That should be our main expectancy. And uh, again, a little bit of Matthew 24. It's worth looking at here. The disciples came to Jesus. They asked him, tell us, verses, I'm not sure what verse that is. It's, it's uh, Matthew 24. Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the close of the age. What can we expect? That's what the disciples were saying here. And Jesus answered them. See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. They'll say that I'm the one that's been expected. I'm the one that's been chosen. I'm the one. It's a bit like King David, isn't it? King David's father didn't expect that King David would be chosen to be king. He expected one of his big sons, his big six-footers, with ruddy hair and big muscles and um, <clears throat> I don't think actually they did have ruddy hair come to think of it I think it was just David but they had big muscles didn't they and uh, they were tall and they were forward-looking men and these were the men that were going to lead lead Israel where God had other plans what they expected they didn't get and that's the way it's going to be and we are expecting the great return of the Lord Jesus Christ 1 Thessalonians 4 16 to 17 beautiful scripture here for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first then we who are alive who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will always be with the Lord the world are not, are not expecting, are they? The world's not expecting Jesus to return. What a lot of old nonsense. What a myth. How can you think that? 2,000 years have gone by and where is he? With your crazy ideas and your strange expectations. But that's what we are, isn't it? Expecting something special. Expecting something wonderful to happen. To be released from the prison of this world, the prison of Satan's kingdom. The men behind me here in this building, and maybe actually I'll swing round and see if I can show it to you. I'll have to get out of the car here. <clears throat> yes, uh, there we are. I'll zoom back. Hopefully that's worked, I don't know. But um, that is the, uh, the red brick frontage of Norwich prison I don't know if that's just the uh, administrative buildings whether the cells are behind it but, um, this is uh, often the uh, the meeting place where people come and uh, probably just park maybe they just go in here I don't know um, but if you were locked up in one of those cells at the moment what would you be feeling like? What would you be thinking? Maybe you've got a leaving date, a date when you expect to come out of here. And um, you can't wait for that day. 
Maybe you're marking your cell walls with it. You know, the old tallies where you put up these vertical lines and uh, then you cross them through after so many have been passed. It's a bit like that, isn't it, with us as Christians? We're, we're putting, scraping the tally on the wall. One, two, three, four, five. And when are we going to put a line through it and say, yes, what we expected is about to happen? So I'll leave you with those thoughts this morning. And uh, I'm going to go and look around the fine city, see if I can find what I want. And uh, I'm expecting to find it. And of course, as I've just said, life's full of surprises. So uh, we just don't know, do we? But it's good not knowing in Christ, because in Christ we know that he knows all about us. And uh, he will bring to fruition, in the end, his plans. And we'll know that what we expected has finally happened. Have a blessed day.